Bitcoin is on the rise once more, and this is after the activation of the failed auction pattern. Actually, a very bullish pattern indeed, which can see Bitcoin hitting a brand new all-time high. That's what I'm going to be talking you through in this video. As always, I'm going to give you a very professional, no-nonsense, to-the-point technical analysis. I'll be explaining my trades, what I am predicting to come next, and how I'll be looking to, you know, take this in terms of those trading scenarios. It's not plain sailing. We're not going to go straight up in one day to new all-time highs. There are some levels to be aware of, and that is what I'm going to help you with in this video. I would like to start off you know, where I left off my last video, pick up from that and give you some real nice insights into the order flow, how that prediction went, leading us up to where we are now with the failed auction and how we can be trading really the next few weeks to months to come. This is a very, very important time for Bitcoin. And uh, yeah, let me help you get on the right page. So as mentioned, I want to pick up where I left off that last video that I made for you, which was on Monday. And I was explaining in this video, I was looking for continuation to the downside. I was explaining why I was bearish and not longing any of this move until we hit the target of $58,000. How did I know that Bitcoin was going to continue to drop? It was the order flow. All of the order flow is what gave me the high probabilities of expecting lower to come, to not take a long too early. Because let's be honest, if you did long too early during any of this section to $58,000, you would have been stopped out that long. You had to remain patient for the drop. And I want to share some insights with you. Obviously, in that video, I was looking at it live in the time the amount of shorts that were opening. And then during the course of the day, as we made our way down from 61 to 60, 259, 258, the whole time, it was uh, very nice indeed because the order flow kept backing us up. In the morning, I'd done a live stream update. I explained to my team why I was bearish. Uh, we had some bearish setups too. We had no interest in longs as we felt it was a high probability of a drop and just staying in short trades. What happened next? We hit the CCV target. Thoughts continue to open. OK, and this is what was very key. And this is what I really want to stress. A lot of people were saying, well, Daniel, how did you know it was going to drop? How do you know they're not trapped shorts? And really simply, it's, it, it was for me very simple. New shorts on a breakdown of support is very bearish. If you need help with understanding open interest, delta, volume, and market direction, well, if you head over to the website on the vault, we do actually have a cheat sheet dedicated to this. I would recommend the open interest uh, cheat sheet, and I would also really recommend that you watch uh, the divergences cheat sheet. So download both of those cheat sheets, and that will help you with this greatly. <laughs> but really simply, I can just let you know in this video, when we're moving down with increase of open interest and high negative delta, that is bearish. It's as simple as that. Do not overcomplicate things. Okay, it can only be bullish if we get a reclaim. Otherwise, as I was happily remaining patient in my short trades for lower to come. As I say, order flow is helpful. Absolutely follow it. Don't fight against what is very, very strong order flow and giving extremely high win rates. I will tell you this, honestly, that is what changes me from a mediocre trader, winning some, losing some, to very high probability, high win rate trader with very big confidence. It is truly simply this, just my reading of the order flow. This is, this is the magic source right here. It is that simple as that, to be honest with you. Okay, and then ending the night, still remaining for looking for lower prices to come. And that was as we were trading around $61,000. Of course, in the end, we come down and we hit $58,000 zone. So the patience, as we say here always, the patience pays off massively. We were waiting for lower. We were waiting for that massive $58,000 target. And from the short at $67,000, we took that all the way down, all the way down from sixty-seven dollars to $58,000. Very nice short trade indeed. And then actually, when we hit 58K, remained a little bit patient and have a guess what happened next. Hope you're not too surprised, but yes, I activated a long trade setup and that was simply as we reclaimed the range low. Okay, simple as very simple stuff, right? Not difficult indeed. I laid it out, gave the plan. I'm waiting for the range low. Then I'm going to wait for the reaction. The reaction given was a move to the upside, a reclaim. And this was another very interesting question that I had here. On the first wick up, why did I not long the first wick up? That was on FOMC. 
generally speaking, right, when we see that pump on FOMC, it ends in a dump. That's exactly what happened on the ES stock market. That's what happened on Bitcoin. This was then on the second and it's not on an FOMC day, right? So I really simply see us get back into the range. As I tell my team, there's no hindsight here. It's live in the time. I'm taking the long trade on Bitcoin. Long trade entry here on Bitcoin as we get back inside the range. Once again, I had a plan. I traded my plan, sticking to that and with, you know, <laughs> putting my money where my mouth is and taking that trade and updating the champion members. That, of course, brings us up to where we are right now on the charts, trading at coming back into $62,000, right? It's very nice indeed. And so now I've given you that kind of interesting outlook of how we originally predicted $67,000, how price rose to $67,000, how from $67,000 we were waiting for $58,000, we hit $58,000, and then we got the reclaim, activating failed auctions and taking long trades, making money on the shorts, making money on the longs. That is what we do, chart champions. And now I will explain what I am looking at next. So as we actually can see here, in terms of the order flow right now, again, so this is very simple stuff, right? We can see open interest is increasing as we are moving up positively. This has the potential, right, of being bearish only if we end up losing daily open. So if we end up trading back down below $59,000, we're going to have a lot of trap longs. And naturally, that would be a very high probability that we can go back and revisit these lows from Wednesday. If we remain above daily open and these longs are having a free ride continuation to the upside, there's no trap longs. There's no reason to be bearish at that point, right? We are back into the range. We are above well, we've still, I'm going to explain this. We've still got some resistance above us, right? <laughs> We're not expecting tomorrow all-time highs, but this is a very good start. The, the fact that we formed the failed auction, losing the range, getting back in, activating the long trades, that's a very good first start, right? So now what do we have to be aware of in terms of next levels, next trades that we can be looking at here? You can see we have this daily naked point of control ever so slightly above us. This sat at around $62,000. So this would be in terms of level to level traders, this would be your next level above you, right? Basically here and around this zone of $62,000. Do I feel $62,000 is the biggest resistance? Well, no, but nevertheless, it is the next level above us. I feel the bigger resistance comes in here around really from 62 Four to, of course, always going to be the highs there around 64,700. But around that $64,000 zone, in my opinion, is a bigger level. You got daily, you got the monthly naked point of control. Okay, would be at a period of, you know, I would class as a bigger level in just simply in a direct comparison between the two. What I would class as a bigger level. So I feel in terms of resistance, we got locally. Um, you know, 64K is a very big level. What I would also always be looking at, of course, this would be the value area low, which is around $63,000. And you can start to pull more local fixed range pools, okay, which would be kind of our last range that we were trading within, including the most recent price action when this loads. You can see we're back into that value area low, but look at this, the point of control there. Also, the other range that I would be pulling is very, very similar. It's just excluding that past price action. But you can see that value area low is, for me, an important level. This would be classed as that previous range value area low. If you just put on a simple wick from the uh, left of that, or a parallel, a sort of line, however you want to call it, horizontal ray, <laughs> uh, you can see that that, when we hide the naked point of controls, you can see that's currently what we're rejecting from, right? So... I mean, not, 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 not a surprise for myself. You get these type of reactions at levels, right? This is this is trading. This is technical analysis for you. So we, we can understand as traders why we get reactions. There's never a random pivot in the chart. Everything is always happening for a reason. You just need to under, take that understanding of everything happens for a reason. Understand there are lots of levels. For example, here, you see a lot of levels up here. Do you think I'm going to be shorting every single one of those levels? No, I have to take only the best trades. So I do have a lot of levels marked out, but I'm very good at really working out that's a level that I am interested in trading and know that's a level that I'm not interested in trading. OK, that's that's, you know, your next step of trading. It all goes from doing your analysis, OK, having well, it's through a process, right? It takes time and experience, but you get there in the end. But of course, that 
you know, kind of context reading, I would say, paired with order flow is is how you basically reach that understanding. It takes time, but you get there. Um, where was I going with this? Yeah, so in, in terms of resistance, we know locally what we got going on. $67,000, $69,000, you know, those levels haven't changed, right? Uh, in terms of below us, we have the reclaim. And this was really, really perfect, right? When you look on a lower term time frame, that was the, uh, the low of the uh, parallel channel. And we actually got the pretty much to the dollar retest uh, late last night before uh, you know this continuation to the upside. So it just goes to show you never, never, never a random pivot. Everything here is happening for a technical reason. OK, you're going to hear other stories and, and beliefs. It was because of this bit of news, it because that bit of news. I'm telling you, there is uh, technical reasons behind everything. Right. How else do you think we're able to predict highs, predict lows, really understand what's happening with the market with very high confidence and probabilities? It's the technical analysis, my friends. Let me tell you that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, for me, really simply now, uh, it would require something that I'm very good at, and that is remaining patient. OK, do I feel we can hit new all time highs on Bitcoin? Let me br let me bring this up because this is important. I want to emphasize it. Do I feel we can hit a new all time high on Bitcoin? Yes, I do. Do I feel that we have to hit that tomorrow? No, of course I do not. Do I recognize there's resistance levels above us, which could absolutely get hit and then end in a rejection candle where I would take a short trade? Yes, absolutely. I believe we can hit a new all time high, but I'm also not going to make the same mistake I was making last month of just too focused on the all time high, too focused on the higher term time frame and missing some short trades. But I missed the short trade from around 71K because I was too focused on a monthly outlook. Then I, I made some changes. I recognized that mistake and I bought at 67,000, took that down to uh, 58,000. Right. So. I'm not going to make that same mistake again, right? I, I recognize we've got some very nice lower term time frame levels of resistance that can act as an absolutely acceptable short trade, which I'd be more than willing to take. So this is the what is most important for you right here. You're here to learn. That's why you watch the channel. I want to help you. I truly do. So please just listen closely. Just because I believe we can hit an all time high, first of all, doesn't mean it's going to happen. OK, second of all, doesn't mean I'm not going to take any short trades. I'm more than happy to do that if we get the reaction warranted to give that entry. OK, so when I'm looking at the chart again, you're looking at me right now. <laughs> but when I'm looking at the chart, I'm telling you this. I understand. Trading is a game of probabilities where the probabilities are always updating. If you had asked me when we were trading at almost fifty six thousand dollars, do I think we're going to all time high? Well, my answer would have been no. Why? Because. Well, we need to at least reclaim the range low for a failed auction. Without that, why would I be looking at all time high? Well, now we've hit step number one. We've got a reclaim of the range low for a failed auction. So I can start to increase that probability of a new all time high. Right. But now I need to see sixty four thousand dollars reclaimed. Well, I'm going to say sixty sixty four and a half. Right. Take out that high. And I need to start to see range point of control at sixty seven thousand dollars reclaimed. And I want to see $69,000 reclaimed. If we come up to these levels and we get a clear, easy rejection with some trap longs into the high, hey, that's a trade which could be a local scalp, turns into a bit of a day, turns into a bit of a swing trade. I'm more than happy for that. OK, and I just want I just really want to make that so clear to you all. OK, I am not a perma bull. I'm not a perma bear. I just want to take trades, have some fun, make some profits and take some wins. So that's what I'm here for. That's what I enjoy. That's what I love. OK, and that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so, yes, I do feel we can hit a new all time high, but I don't think it's going to be plain sailing. We're there tomorrow. There's levels of interest on the way up, which I am more than happy to take a short trade at. It just requires some patience for those levels to be hit and then wait and actually see the order flow and the reaction at thus at said levels, right? Below us, we have the daily level. Again, if we lose the daily open, which is not happening yet, right? And that's why I wouldn't short where we are now. This order flow is not something I would short into uh, with no actual reaction or, or actually strong level hits. We are at that previous range value area low. But for me, with that semi-weak level, we should say, no real high confluence, uh, with the order flow that we're seeing, that for me is not how I would activate a short trade. We are. It's not the way that I trade, right? That's not a good enough reaction. 
Though thus, I will be continuing to look for higher next level above us, right? Simply as the naked point of control. Um, and then I'll make those informed decisions. Again, while we're above daily open, well, this is uh, a very strong breakout locally and really, you know, just confirming the failed auction. If we lose daily open, well, then I would, you know, absolutely recognize that as being much more bearish. We have this weak daily level of support, but nevertheless, it's around that type of um, still at the old range, well, the current range low, right? And it is going to be sat down and around the current CC zone. So we have somewhat confluence, but really if we're losing daily open, I would be looking back down and take out Wednesday's lows. And if we do not hold any sort of fake out below Wednesday's lows, I do feel there's a very high probability of coming down to around $49,000, to be honest with you. So again, level to level, I'm not taking a short trade now. There's no reason for me to execute. But if we move upwards, and then that's going to be the preferred scenario, right? If we move upwards and we hit a major level of resistance and we get that, actual executable entry then of course i would take it or if we end up losing daily open here and this is the high that's right now let's say then i would have to lose that uh, bullishness and absolutely accept you know now probabilities change once more and we can look down further so I, I i truly i truly hope that i'm helping you with these videos I'm, I'm i'm trying my best here um you have to understand a few things my level of trading is I don't even want to say it's complex because I, I feel it's fairly simple when you really study me every day and what I'm doing. It's it's not too complex. It's just got a it, it's just, I want to say, pretty advanced. It's not what you see every day, uh, but you can absolutely learn what I'm teaching. Here we go again like that. There's continuation to the upside. That just goes to show you why you don't. Well, that just goes to show you like I wrote here. Uh, where did I write it? Anyway, I wrote it just saying follow the order flow. Follow the order flow, it's helpful. It helped me remain bearish all the way down. It helped me flip from my bearishness and take a long trade when we got the reclaim of the channel low. Short in the high, long in the lows, that's what I do. That's what I'm about. If you want to learn it, you absolutely can. There's uh, not holding anything back. There's no secrets here. If you want to learn it, chartchampions.com. Every single day of the week, we got live streams. We got live trading streams. Rivalry's live right now. One, baby. <laughs> He's yeah, making yeah. profits. He's making money. If you want to see him pulling the pulling the trades live in the time, bring it up to bank. We got the live trading, right? We got the... Um, uh, daily live stream updates we got the discord channel to be giving you updates we got the dedicated altcoin streams for you all we got the amh we got every single thing that you need and i'm forgetting the biggest thing of all right the whole course educational library from beginner to master everything that you need to conquer these charts we got you chartchampions.com this is the place if you want to take things seriously if you want to learn if you want to be the best chartchampions.com Thank you ever so much. Hope you've enjoyed. And I will see you guys on YouTube next week at some point. Uh, <laughs> that was as simple as that. If you want to see me sooner, then you know where you can get me in the Discord. And I do, of course, have my Champions live stream on Sunday. That is similar to this, right? But way more detail. Actually giving you precise setups that I'll be looking to take. And, uh, you know, covering more assets as well. Okay, I'll go over my Elliott Wave count. Uh, for for the champions as well in that champions live stream on Sunday. So it's going to be a good one. You don't really want to be missing it. Uh, so yeah, if you don't sign up to champions now by chartchampions.com. I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm going to say thank you ever so much. Hope you've enjoyed. And that is me signing out. Thank you and goodbye. Cheers.